to our embassy here in Washington, D.C. This came about as a result of our S.A. Watch delegation to El Salvador last month, where we met with the president of the country, President Serene, rights leaders, and many others. But the most <coughs> moving, most difficult meeting we had was when we met our delegation, we met five from our delegation, went into this prison, visited for an hour and a half with five women who are in prison for miscarriages. They had been in this prison for eight years in El Salvador. Eight years ago, there was a very, very strict anti-abortion bill that was passed. And there are 17 women at present in prison for miscarriages. All of these women are poor Campesina women, and they're powerless, vulnerable, malnourished, and they all have the same story of the experience of the of beating a miscarriage. And I'm going to say their story, you've never quite heard anything quite like this, what we saw from the very beginning was a grave injustice, and also women who had no voice. They were brought, they were fainted, brought to the hospital where this doctor, very right wing doctor, questioned the miscarriage and said, I think you had an abortion. These women, each of them, in their own story, they're handcuffed to the bed in the hospital. And when they're well, days later, they bring them to court. And the court appointed attorney tells the women not to speak. It's in their advantage not to say anything. And these women, of course, they come from a reality where they're very oppressed. So they don't dominate it. The system there at this point. And so they go before the judge, and they all receive between 30 and 40 years since. These women we met and the others they have been in now for eight years. Most have 22 years to go before they're released. A couple of women in our delegation listening to their stories had to leave during the visit. A couple of them, they were so, they, they just wept, they wept. They never heard anything so horrific. Now when we left, we simply said, we are going back in two days to the United States. We represent a large wish of this human rights organization. And we are going to tell your stories. Most people have never heard of these women from Amnesty International just recently. And began the online of we signed their over 100,000 signatures to date. They're just getting started. Amnesty International also <coughs> one of the leaders of the Amnesty Director of Amnesty International Human Rights Office uh, submitted an op-ed piece to the New York Times, which is very significant, very important. This appeared just two weeks before our delegation. Mm -hmm. This woman from Amnesty just three weeks before our delegation went into the prison and talked to some of the same women uh, we talked to and shared the same story we heard. Their calls, their stories are just beginning to spread in the United States. Most people are not aware of this. And our mission is to help spread the word, to help people in our country become aware for that reason, we are going to the Salvador Embassy and we're submitting a letter, a very respectful letter, that five of us have signed. The letter simply says that we were on a delegation representing uh, human rights organizations. We see a grave injustice here. And in the letter, we simply say, when there is an injustice, silence is complicit. And we are here to break our silence, to break
bring the storm to the storm in the United States and to ask you, Embassy of El Salvador, that you represent your country. We are asking you to do everything that you can to get your leaders in El Salvador to release these 17 men, all the last 17 men.
she's been in for eight years. She did not see her, she had a son before she ran into prison. She has not seen her son for seven years. Uh, her son is now eight years old. Uh, so, in many women, now there's another section in prison that is not an Irish baby, it's reported in the New York Times. We did not get into that section, but some of the women, a few of the women, I'm not quite sure if they represent yeah. some in Law 17. There are some women in prison whose little children are able to escape with them for a while. Let me say when we when the prison that we visited, the prisons in El Salvador are not like the prisons that the 300 of us went to. Nonviolent protests against the school. It's the prisons that we go to. Let me say it's like the Marriott mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. to living under a bridge. <clears throat> Life in a prison in El Salvador is because we asked the women after they was telling them, you know, what is life like? The first year, for most of them, the first year, year and a half, it is so overcrowded, they sleep on the floor. There are not enough long beds. So for or more, they are on the floor. The water, there's a real scarcity, a real problem with the water. They are given two gallons for three days, and that's for drinking and for washing. It's ranching. When we asked about the food, it's terrible. So life, it's a struggle for survival. What we heard, though, it, it just emboldened us. I mean, it just reminded us, I must say, to be personal, we've been on actually 17 delegations over the years, yeah. 17 different countries. We visited <laughs> presidents, defense ministers, university students, indigenous leaders, including some union leaders in prison for a short while in Guatemala. But never before have we in an experience like this in this I and others on that delegation came back. We could not see. I know I couldn't. I just couldn't see. Knowing that these women are still in that prison as I am in my comfortable bed and surroundings here. And so for three days, I just sent out like 250 copies of the New York Times article, which is excellent. And just a personal reflection why I and others will be spreading their story and inviting friends and our group and family to join in. Like Fisher Romero said, we can all do something and do it well. So come on board. For us, this is a new issue. We've been talking, of course, and we continue to talk about militarization, about uh, the drug war, uh, U.S. foreign policy. This is more personal. Uh, this reminds me of the early days when Bishop Romero was assassinated, the church women raped and killed, the Jesuits, the young mother, and her teenage daughter, Selena, Elma Soto. What we're talking about here is the human condition of suffering that we can connect to in a more personal way. When we hear the drug war, which is very important, militarization, but we don't know how to put a hand on it. What I found is this brings back memories of when Bishop Romero was assassinated, the church from him were killed, raped and killed. Others, El Paso, over 800 killed, many of them children. We, we were filled with pain. But then we said, what can we do? What can we do? You know, to, 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 what can we do to express our anger in a very healthy way and not let it be destructive? And that's what we're doing this morning. We came back angry, but we want to express that anger in a very healthy way, non-violent way, a way of love and solidarity, as we did in the early days. When the 
we came back from El Salvador years ago after the death of Bishop Romero and the rape and murder of church women, we were filled with pain. I remember that. And we said, what are we going to do? And we drew on the wisdom and the experience of, you know, Rosa Parks, Dr. King, Gandhi, and the great Dorothy Day and the great peacemakers. And we said, you know, let's do what they did. They were angry, but they directed their anger in very, very healthy and positive and constructive ways. They started to build a movement. And the anger is still there. And I'm filled with a lot of anger at this point because of what they're doing to this world. And what we are doing to Latin America because of our militarism, the School of the Americas, Winset. But We've always been directing our anger and constructing mm -hmm. So the spawning is going to be in that space. When you are in the... Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. When you are in the lobby waiting for Hi. your meeting, to, um, is there anyone you can call, like a human rights lawyer, and say, we are here inside and we're here for this purpose? Because if it goes to a trial, you might be able to get that person as an expert witness because they're connected electronically and they can hear what's going on. No, we have nothing. Henrik yesterday sent out a press advisory. Mm -hmm. and I know that today we are going to be on the, at the South North Embassy. Mm -hmm. And actually, we got one call. Marianne Perron was on our delegation to talk to the women. She couldn't be there. She's in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but she got a call yesterday. There will be at least one person representing the, the Spanish press, mm -hmm. Latino press, which yeah. is good. Hopefully, others will come. But I, I, I don't know. Washington is very, it's a real challenge to get the mm -hmm. coverage. We've been here for years. In the early days, we got some good coverage. Right. Uh, at the Pentagon, I remember we had 3,000. Mm -hmm. That was years ago. Yeah. At the White House. But I'm thinking, like, if it goes to trial, if you are in the lobby, contemporaneous, you would be on the phone with somebody who is a human rights lawyer or somebody like that, and they would hear what is going on, and that person could possibly then be an expert witness during a trial because they're connected to what's happening. I, I think rather than call the attorney, we would want to call have someone from El Salvador. Yeah. I mean, and some of us, well, we've been through this before. We heard all kinds, you know, options. Uh, we might want you to come back. We're fortunate enough to come back for trial. That's mm -hmm. our hope. Mm -hmm. we'll come back to trial. Mm -hmm. Actually, have the opportunity to speak, not through an attorney. I personally want to talk about right. that visit, spending an hour and a half with those five women in prison. What they said to us, I want to tell their story in a sense. And the grave injustice that they have been exposed to. And how to, it was so real. They're there eight years now in prison. They've got 22 years to go. What is their crime? A miscarriage. Mm -hmm. A miscarriage. And that's why this sign that I held last week, I went over this morning. A miscarriage is not a crime. Three, last 17 in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. And the other signs are very simple. Three, last 17. Mm -hmm. Silence is consent. This is a grave injustice. So, but no, I understand what you're saying. So we'll go in and just, you know, we have some folks who are going to be outside yeah. to just monitor. Excuse me. Indigenous leaders, human rights advocates. Never before have we ever had an experience like going into 